Okay, welcome all. Uh, today we are together with Matthew Padargana uh, for his uh, presentation, uh, Natural Materials for Multi-Story uh, Buildings and Analysis of Existing Building Facades. Thank you, John, for your uh, acceptance uh, to, be, to be with us uh, for this seminar presentation. And uh, before starting, uh, let me introduce uh, Matthew uh, Padargana uh, in a brief way. He's an architect and a builder who uh, specialized in bioclimatic architecture and natural building materials. He graduated from ENSA Lyon, France, and has a PhD degree from Matthew in Building Sciences. He is currently working as an uh, assistant professor in the Department of Architecture at Yashar University. He is also a member of Association for Natural Building Materials and Techniques in Turkey. And um, therefore uh, organizes his res research work on related topics. Uh, he worked on the design and construction of several buildings and made with uh, earth straw and timber both as an architect and a builder, and he has led several workshops on earth construction, straw bale construction, and timber framing in Turkey and abroad. His last research works are related to the integration of natural materials and especially earth and uh, fibre mixes into conventional constructions. In today's pre presentation, he will analyze different construction methods with uh, natural materials. Pajam. Thanks okay. a lot, Ebo Oja, for this introduction, and thanks a lot for this uh, invitation to share a part of my research. Uh, I'm really happy to, to do this, and you will soon understand that this is an ongoing research that I'm working on, but I really wanted to to speak about it, especially in the aftermath of the earthquake uh, that uh, our country experienced, because I really think that uh, working with alternative techniques and alternative uh, materials is really important for the reconstruction, and that those materials that we call natural are a really viable alternative for building not only individual houses, but also multi-story building. So what is this research I'm doing? It is uh, an analyzing, analysis of uh, existing building and understanding how they use uh, natural material, how they detail the construction to make those buildings as um, efficient, both thermally and um, structurally than other uh, more conventional materials such as uh, reinforced concrete or uh, bricks. So, which material and which building I will be speaking about? Uh, a few materials, and the list is not exhaustive. The amount of building is low for now because it is a long process of uh, researching documents that are not all available online, and therefore architects need to be contacted and they need to accept to send their documents, but. Those materials that as I've been working on till now are mostly earth construction and different type of uh, different techniques for earth construction. Stone, but I would not present any example today. Hempcrete, uh, straw bale, and such. So we are calling this uh, natural material for a very simple reason, which is that those materials are materials that underwent uh, very few uh, transformation process. And most of them are, um, pardon, are left over from uh, agriculture, so, uh, waste from agriculture uh, products. And therefore, they are not a material that is 
produced for the construction that is um, that is really mined or that is really uh, transformed that the energy of uh, preparation is not about the construction but about something else and this is a very important part of being a natural material is a few transformation a few process and a production not directly for construction but as a byproduct of something else. So the projects that I will uh, present are um, the apartment building Dirty Harry in Switzerland, the Lorangerie, an office building in France, and Al Natura Campus, an office building in Germany, all made with uh, us, but with different techniques. Two building with uh, using hempcrete as an insulation material, two buildings using straw bale as insulation material, and finally uh, the enterprise center in UK, again using a straw, but this time not as a insulation material, but as a cladding material, as a finishing material. But what I'm trying to to really see through the, this uh, small research is how those materials are used, how those materials can really be um, used in construction for high-rise building and keeping in mind that those high-rise buildings are built in cities, are built in places where time of construction is really important and therefore uh, it should be built fast, ready, and uh, not impacting the closed environment during the construction. So I will start with this uh, building made with us techniques. So the first one that you can see on the picture on the on the right is a Dirty Harry. It is a co-housing project in uh, Switzerland that has been uh, designed by Atelier Neme and it is just finished to build in uh, 2022. What is really interesting in this building is that the, the architect team is really using a conventional construction technique of reinforced concrete, slab and uh, shear walls, but all the exterior wall are made out of earth block, compressed earth block. And, the, and therefore, by doing this, they both use uh, local material, at least for the, all the exterior and interior wall, and uh, material with really low embodied energy. So here you can see on the detail of the construction that have been uh, given by the architects. Mm -hmm. So here you can see how this building has been made by having two reinforced concrete slabs that I am underlining in red here. And in between those slabs, the bricks are placed, but it's a two leaf wall with insulation in the middle. So why to use a masonry, uh, a masonry cavity wall to achieve a better uh, insulation of the building? because the uh, regulation, the thermal regulation in Switzerland are very strict. And therefore, the insulation is really important. However, the architect really wanted to use this, uh, these bricks for the good uh, properties of earth, meaning that the earth can absorb humidity and the earth can regulate the temperature in the room. And therefore, they have used those, they have used those blocks. 
However, after speaking by the architects, I also discovered that the earth block on the exterior are not a direct compressed earth block. They have, I mean, not only earth, there is also some uh, cement that is uh, added inside for, uh, uh, to prevent erosion of the facade as these blocks are directly exposed to rain. And here we can see the construction process. So all the bricks, the blocks that are produced in a factory, and therefore they are uh, delivered on site where it is only a uh, mass on reconstruction process that is happening as it would be in any other case. So the using earth block allows the worker to use a material in the same in a way they knew because it was le just like creating a mass on reconstruction and not learning from another technique. The next building that I have been working on is L'Orangerie in France. Again, a very new building and a totally different construction technique. This uh, three-story building is made out of ramp earth. So ramp earth is a technique in which the earth is compacted layer by layer in a formwork. However, the very interesting part of this is that uh, the ramped earth were made out of the ramped earth were made uh, the ramped earth were made out of blocks. So therefore, it's again prefabricated prefabricated building, prefabricating building blocks that uh, make the construction faster. And also in the opposite of the previous building, this is a load bearing facade. The previous one, they had a reinforced concrete construction system. But in this case, the facade is load bearing. So you can see on, the, on this section, that all the blocks are uh, placed on the top of each of each other, and the thickness of the wall is decreasing by uh, level to make the building lighter and prevent also uh, buckling of the facade. An interesting point of this building is despite the material being earth, so a material that is usually mined or carried from, from a place, this earth was excavation earth from a nearby construction site. And therefore, it has been very few um, materials that has been imported from far away in all the construction. So you can see here again the construction process and the planning process as all the blocks needs to be designed first, drawn, and then prepared to be uh, to dry before being implemented on site. But the fact of preparing all those blocks and then directly putting it on the construction, on the building, made the building very fast to be built because very large block were used. The next building is again a ramp earth building, but a totally different construction technique. So despite being ra a ramp earth building, this is an insulated ramp earth, meaning that there is insulation that is integrated in the in the in the in the ramp earth, and it is not a load bearing. Uh, wall, but a self-supported facade. It means that this facade is attached to the structural system of the building, but it is not carrying anything else than itself. So again, here the idea was to use excavation earth to use uh, reused materials to prevent 
the need of digging earth from somewhere, as there are some studies that are really showing that if all the earths that are excavated from a city were used for the construction of building, the cities could be totally, all the buildings made in the cities early could be totally made from this earth. However, it is not the case, despite some of uh, research projects like in Paris that are really dealing with this. So this building is probably one of the largest Ramadas building uh, in the world right now. And it has been showcasing very uh, interesting techniques inside to allow to maintain the comfort. And for this reason, this building has been uh, voted as one of as the most comfortable office building in Germany in 2020. So when we come for closer, it's really clear how the structural system is working with reinforced concrete slab um, carried by a reinforced uh, by a reinforced concrete column, and in front of those slab we have those ram earth wall, and it is possible to see that those walls are made by small blocks placed on the top of each other. Moreover, what you can see is right here in the middle of the block a different type of hatches that is represented the insulation material. Of course, since it is a load-bearing facade, insulation material that is used is not um, weak insulation, but uh, strong insulation made from uh, uh, from uh, glass, uh, glass insulation, we will see on the next uh, page. Whereas um, all the material, all the earth and material are coming from excavation um, sites, but this time a bit far away from the construction site itself, as some very specific earth needed to be found to achieve this uh, construction. So then here we can see that how this building, these blocks are made and how this building is uh, really insulated and how the cold is prevented to enter. So there, there is a, a 50, uh, 61, uh, 71 thickness, uh, 70 thickness wall, round earth wall, made of two leaves of round earth and in the middle 17 centimeter of foam glass making insulation. And what is more important and very an achievement is in addition to it, a wall heating system has been installed during the prefabrication of the round earth block. And therefore, in case of very cold uh, time, the surface of the wall can be heated up and prevent uh, uh, cool uh, uh, feeling of coldness inside the building. So in the integration of this uh, water heating pipe was, wa was one of the first, uh, was the first time to be done with ramp earth in the case of this building. And a lot of uh, research has been made on it. So, what can be seen also by the number uh, six here is the integration of erosion barrier on the facade. So due to the very lo uh, long walls, there is a risk of erosion in case of large rain. So the builder here has its uh, distinctive feature of putting some layer of truss and lime into the wall to prevent the erosion. And it has been calculated that thanks to those very harder material, the erosion of the, the wall will only lose about one centimeter after 50 years of use. So that is nothing 
and it is compared to the thickness of the wall. Moreover, to be able to keep the two leaves together, there are some um, other materials that are used inside, which are geogrid. So geogrid is a kind of uh, plastic mesh that is integrated into the wall and prevented to preventing the, the two leaves of the wall to separate uh, due to uh, vertical forces. And how this wall is done? As you can see, ram uh, Earth is rammed into a formwork with the expanded glass placed as a layer in the middle, and then the blocks are placed on the wall one by one, and then the wall is finished, all the gaps in between are uh, filled. After ramp us, we will go through two M crate buildings that are being made in France and more precisely in Paris. So what is M crate? M crate is a material that is based on hemp and lime. So it's basically a very lightweight concrete based with lime as a binder. And thanks to the properties of hemp, which is a very porous material, it, uh, this matter, uh, the hempcrete is very light and very insulating material. So the first building that we are sp uh, I'm speaking about is this building here on the right. So a stone building, and you, as you can see, very bearing the very distinctive feature of uh, Paris architecture with uh, large windows, French balconies, and modern natures around the windows. However, the main difference with the other surrounding stone buildings is its structure. This is not a fully stone building, of course, the structure is timber. So it's a CLT uh, slab placed on the reinforced, uh, on the stone walls. However, to be able to build in France again, there is some uh, thermal regulation to respect and only having a stone wall would not be enough for it. And therefore the architects have been using hempcrete on the in on the interior part of the building so that's what we can see on the details that is presented here you can see that the ground floor is made out of uh, reinforced concrete for structural reason and also especially fire protection uh, whereas other elements are totally made with stone and CLT panel as a slab. So the usage of this uh, stone uh, of, 30, of 35 centimeter thick stone plus uh, five centimeter of hempcrete allow to have uh, enough insulation according to the to the French regulation. So and we can see on the more detailed view that how the slab are placed on uh, with the metallic L profile placed on a stone that is especially uh, cut and carved to receive the slab, whereas the windows are not integrated in the facade, but in the insulation, interior insulation layer. So all these stones that are placed on the wall were prepared in the curry and cut in the curry and then just uh, placed directly on the wall, on the 
on the building that uh, in Paris. And after the full construction of the building, all the gaps filled, then the interior hempcrete was applied for, as an insulation layer to prevent uh, heat loss. So this was really the last part of the construction once the building was finished and all windows and everything was applied. So this layer of hempcrete is very important not only for insulation, but also working with its plaster as a uh, air barrier layer and vapor barrier layer. So pre uh, preventing any uh, air gap. The next building is a uh, building Rumira. So another building in Paris, that is a very interesting building because based, despite built with hempcrete also, built in Paris, having a white facade and a similar uh, geometry of the openings is built with totally different technique. This is a steel construction with hempcrete in fill. And this is very important to underline this part. It has been designed in opposite of the previous building that is a very heavy building. This one has been designed as a very light building. So using steel as a structural material and hempcrete as an infill material really allowed to make a very light building. And also a very, very well insulated building uh, for this purpose. So how it is done, we can see, and we will see better on the next detail that all the uh, frame, the metallic frame is buried inside the hempcrete. And the hempcrete is the exterior material I mean, of course, it's protected by the lime plaster, but by getting all around and working as an envelope, therefore, there is no thermal bridges and there is no uh, air, uh, air gap. So we can see here how the hempcrete is, uh, how the structure for supporting the hempcrete is done we can really see the eye beam. And then on the eye beam, we have a secondary timber frame. Why do we need this timber frame? Because hempcrete by itself, as it is an insulation material, is very weak under compression or under shock. And therefore, there is a need of a secondary timber structure to uh, hold the material. And that's how the architect did with this by creating a secondary timber structure. And then here as a construction, we can really understand that there is a steel, the construction of a steel structure with a slab. And then we have the secondary timber structure, the gypsum board that are closing the building from the inside, and then the hempcrete is sprayed all over the facade. So using this technique and working with directly prefabricated po uh, steel portal frame, prevented to make the building very fast. And that was the reason why the architect chose the, those techniques of uh, using uh, steel, uh, prefabricated steel frame. And once the steel frame in, in uh, and the steel frame and the secondary timber frame, blowing uh, hempcrete, because that was the fastest technique used for building. And now I will present again two uh, straw bale building again, two multi-story building. And as you can see, in most of the example, I have been working with example in France, not because 
I'm French, not because there is more building like this in France, but for one main reason, which is that the French regulation are very easy on those natural uh, material and allow their usage both as load bearing material or as um, insulation material, even for public building, just at the condition of following uh, professional regulation that have been written by some professional of the construction, either straw bell or handcrete or earth, or by uh, using a, speci a specific uh, regulation on experimental materials and techniques, where if the architect and the engineer can prove that this construction is working, it is they are allowed to use it. So the first building I want to speak about is La Ferme du Rail. That is again a, a building near Paris, just at the border between Paris and the and the banlieue and the, uh, the, neighbor, the neighbors out of Paris. And this building is very interesting because it is a, a timber frame building and that is using straw bales directly as an infill material for insulation. However, the most interesting part is that the architect really tried to work with local companies, local materials, and the uh, and local people trying to educate them, teach them how to build, so they can uh, then find a job in this uh, activity of construction with uh, natural materials. So. There is one four-story building that is used as an apartment building. And as you can see, it is a timber facade, basically, with a timber construction. And straw bales have been used as an infill material. However, to be able to use it and comply with fire regulation, there was a need of protecting the straw bale from fire. And that's the reason why you can see at this number five to have some recycled gypsum fire panel on one side and a lime plaster on the other side. So no part of the bales, no part of the timber is accessible to, to fire. On the front of the building, there is a cladding that is made out of uh, half chestnut trees. So the possibility of using those Chestnut is just a minute, pardon. Is not um, uses those chestnut half chestnut trees as a cladding material was giving the possibility of using very uh, thin timber that is otherwise not used for construction, not used for any reason, but still cut to. Uh, allow other trees to grow, and chestnut is also was also cho chosen because of its very good property and durability. Oh, as we can see, most of the material are coming from not Paris, of course, but from surrounding regions, not very far around or in the circle of three hundred kilometer, but. The straw that is used on the facade is directly from the field nearby. So what was the construction is really uh, facade panels, timber uh, timber fret panels prefabricated on site uh, in a in a workshop, placed on site and then in field blo uh, box by box with straw beds. And then the straw bales are plastered. And here on the picture on the right, on the bottom, we can see the cladding made out of uh, chestnut branches. 
Another building with straw bales is this municipality building in France uh, that is in a more rural area of France, not in Paris this time, but using similar techniques. However, the most distinctive feature is to read that to reduce the construction cost, the architect really worked on having a reinforced concrete uh, structure because unfortunately this is the cheapest how to build a structure in France and uh, wrapping the building with uh, straw bale panels. To reduce the cost and the amount of material used also, the architect decided to keep all concrete visible and all straw bale panel visible. So therefore, uh, attention has been and care has been taken during the construction process to the exposed material and especially the CLT board that are the back of the uh, straw bale panels and to the reinforced concrete floor. So this facade again is a self load bearing facade in a way that all the panels are placed on the top of each other and only attached to the slab to transfer horizontal loads, but all vertical loads are on the panel on the top of each other. The architecture feature of having this very large um, seal, window seal, is coming for the protection of the plaster below. So those seals are both used to uh for for the sliding shutters to as a rail for the sliding shutters but also as a protect as a protection of the plaster below so there is no rain uh running on the plaster and being and damaging the plaster so again most of the material are local such as the timber for the timber frame or the straw bales or the lime plaster. However, like in most of the, the building, you can see when glue lam or CLT is used, those materials are mostly going coming from Germany or Austria that are the main, some of the main uh, producer in Europe, whereas in France or in UK, as we see in the next building, those panels are not produced or are not in uh, large quantity enough. So here we can see how those panels are covered from lime by lime on the exterior with using some meshes on all uh, timber element to prevent cracks of the fight of the plaster and in the interior part, the reinforced concrete that he le left exposed and the CLT panels that are also left expo exposed to be uh, the interior of the building. And here we have some uh, pictures of the building during construction with the reinforced concrete uh, shear walls and then the straw bed in field of the panel and the panels that are placed on site directly and protect it with a waterproofing membrane for be waiting for the plaster. Why it is like this? Uh, because it is built in a region in France where uh, rain is very common, e even in the summer, in usual. Therefore, it is needed to, to make sure that no rain, no humidity is entering the bell during the construction process. And finally, the last building I'm speaking about is a bit different because it is not a very, it's a very large building, a very interesting one, using a lot of natural material, a lot of reused material. It is deemed as the most ecological building of uh, UK or even in the in the world. Uh, when it was built, by the way, the date is wrong, it's 2016. Uh, anyway, uh, however, 
the usage of the matter, the natural material on the facade is a bit different, as in this case, they are left exposed on purpose. And we can see it here that either it will be wood, either it is straw, these materials are exposed and they are the cladding, they are the material protecting the interior of the building, which uh, totally opposes as the previous type of material we have seen where all those natural fibers were protected inside the wall. In this case, these are the one protecting the wall and their contribution is not about insulation, but about rain protection. How it is done? It is done by using a technique that is called thatch. That is a technique of creating a roof or surfaces with fibers, with straw, but in general with straw or reeds in, in Europe, but there is totally different material also on, in other parts of the, the world that could be made with uh, banana leaves or cocoa or coconut fibers in other parts of the world. So in this case, despite of the, this such uh, wall and such cladding having a lifespan of 50 years, the architect and the contractor work together to determine a construction process that would allow the thatch to be replaced easily in case of problem. And therefore, instead of working with thatching the wall where all the thatch is attached and is working at once, and therefore, if there is any problem, all the, all the wall or the part of the wall needs to be replaced. The thatch was built in a timber box. And therefore, there is just a panel to replace wherever there is some uh, failed material. Another feature that is really important is all those, this straw that is used as a cladding is local, as well as the timber used for the, for the cassette that is uh, holding the thatch. All of them are coming from 30 to 50 kilometers around the building. And therefore, it is really making a local uh, building. So you can see here the material map that has been developed by the architects and showing where all those materials were coming from. So except some, again, as I said, the glue lamp that has not been uh, added in this uh, list because the glue lamp is not on the facade, but on the, as the structural material, except for the glue lamp, most of the material are coming either from UK or from British, uh, from the British island in general. And here we can see some detail on how those such cassettes are produced with the straw placed on the box and then the box placed on the timber, on the timber frame supporting the cladding. So, as a conclusion of this beginning of the of research that is really not uh, finished right now, I wanted to, to speak about the different facade type and material. And there is a direct relation between the type of material and the type, type of facade. What is, does it mean? It means that structural facade can only be made with materials that have uh, structural capacities, that have enough compressive strengths or tensile strengths to, to retain it. And in the case of natural material, it will be only earthen material and stone, and especially rammed earth. However, despite this being possible, using stone or rammed earth, 
most of the construction um, would not prefer using facade material as a, as a structural facade. They would prefer to use it as a load bearing facade, meaning that the facade will support its own weight. The facade will support itself, but the other part of the building, all the floor levels and the roof will be supported by an independent, independent structure and therefore separating the different part of the building and allowing uh, to have higher building and also uh, less risk in case of failure of the facade. Another thing is that different ways can be used for creating a facade. It can be either load bearing. So in this case, you need, as I said, pan uh, panels or materials that have this capacity or infill. And infill, it means that any material, as long as it can stick or be placed between boards, can be used. And the material that is creating the, the structure of the facade is not important anymore. And this is possible with most of the natural fibers. However, in the case of fast, uh, but in this case, it is an infill. So infill means the material is hidden. And the material is hidden because it cannot resist to rain or to erosion or to any uh, environmental uh, problems, as well as it cannot resist to fire. But in the op opposite, some of the material, and material used usually for thatching, can be used directly as a protection material. So then the, um, the property has, are reversed. And these materials are not used as insulation anymore, or as infill anymore, but as a protection, and by using specific technique in this case. So, but when we speak about facade, we speak about creating an interface between exterior and interior. And what is the most important part of those facades is usually uh, the U value of the facade. This is what is looked for by engineers and by uh, regulation to see if the wall can really protect the building from the climatic condition and lower the energy consumption of the building. And we can see See here is that by using different type of natural material, the U value of the walls will vary between 0.12 watt per square meter Kelvin to 0.63 watt per uh, square meter Kelvin. And again, this is of course really depending of the thickness of the wall, but as we can see, a wall with 40 centimeters or more thickness, whatever are the material used, have this type of U, as a low U value between 0.12 and 0.16. But a lower thickness will mean a much higher U value, or, or if we check the building made with earth, like all natural building or l'orangerie made with round earth. Both of them, despite having some insulation, they have very high U value, especially for l'orangerie building or for Oberkampf, uh, stone and hempcrete uh, building. They have a very high U value because the amount of insulation that is integrated into it is very low. And therefore, they cannot reach uh, 
the numbers given by the regulation are just enough. And for example, if we speak about the orangery building, this was really uh, a discussion between the uh, mechanical engineers and the municipality for the approval of the building. And it they, uh, they managed to do it by showing that the energy consumption of the building, despite having a U, high U value, will not be higher than another building with a, a lower U value, thanks to the property of earth that can be used for cooling the building, instead of only thinking about uh, winter comfort and ener uh, heat energy saving, they were demonstrating that there will be less the en energy used for cooling the building. So here I'm finishing my presentation. I will take any question if you have. I would be happy to, to answer. Thanks a lot for listening. And I want really to precise that even if I didn't place all the references of the pictures that I use or the document that I use, they are all sources from the web except for the element of dirty area that are provided by the architects. Thanks a lot again. Thank you, Matthew, for your great uh, presentation. It, it is really interesting. And uh, has anybody, uh, does anybody have any questions? I guess everything is clear. Uh, if not, uh, then I will end the session. Okay. Thank you again, Matthew. Thanks.